people. No, no, one I, I can have. No, I can have a whole bunch of people up, Mark. If you've oh, got okay. any extra time, I'd love you to chill around, and I always love your your communication. So when yeah. you're up and I, and I look around to the different people and I see your face, I always like full of joy, man. So don't worry whatsoever. <laughs> I want you to be around, you know. <laughs> well, there there was a there was an ancient people called the Anasazi, which eventually turned into like the Navajo and the Hopi and this group of Southwest American Indians. And yeah. they, they're called the ancient ones, is what the Navajo, the modern day American Indians, they called them the ancients. They were way before their people ever got to the United States. And they said at one point, there were four brothers of mankind. There was the red brother, the black brother, the yellow brother, and the white brother. And the brothers sat down because the world had gotten so chaotic. <clears throat> they needed to decide what they were going to do. And so they decided that that the technology was too great. They had control of the weather and they had control of every function of the earth. And they decided to destroy the technology and return to the natural ways of man, the natural ways of life. And so they did that. That's that's according to the Hopi traditions, the Anasazi, the Navajo traditions, believe that this is true. And they said that one day the world will return to such chaos that the white brother will return they, they wrote down this prophecy on this stone. And a piece of this stone was broken off and sent east with White Brother. And one day White Brother will return with this piece of the stone and will attack so the prophecy can be read so that they will, all the brothers of mankind will return to these old ways of doing things. I just, I find that fascinating in the light of what we're doing now and what we're seeing on the world now and the, the fear of technology. And if you'll listen to the ancient voices, um, the Hindu uh, text, the old Hindu text, it talks about technology and it as well, that that mankind had destroyed itself and basically had to reset civilization. Are we the group that is able to push through with civilization or do we destroy ourselves? I agree with that. I don't no, no, go ahead. Uh, I can hold my thoughts, absolutely. I yeah, agree ahead, with him because um, even the monks, the Buddhist monks from India, because I'm more like my wife, she's Buddhist, so I have to actually hang out with all the monks, period. They also give me the books that shows me the same thing. So I think we're, yeah. we're, on, the, we're on the verge of the new new era. If we go by the Bible, we're, going, we're getting ready to hit that one area. Nobody's going to be wanting it, but it's going to happen. So that's, that goes on to what we were speaking about earlier as well, um, where, you know, Robbie, Robbie was saying that we, you lived, you know, for quite, a, quite some time outside of the city as well, and, you know, with Cherokee as well, and then also going on to what Mark said there. The, the thing is that I bring up these topics quite a lot with a couple of my friends, and I get I, l I love to converse with people that don't always have the exact same opinion that I do, yep. so I think that that's a good way to learn, you know? Yeah. And some people have completely the opposing perspective and have conversations amongst each other respectfully that you can actually like you know learn from one another. And the thing is that I have a lot of um, these kind of conversations with people, and a lot of people kind of yearn for simpler ways where we do go back to to kind of um, a society where that is more natural. And I don't wish for things to go bad so that it can go that way. I'm not trying to expedite that. Because obviously, as a family man, I want things to be as calm as possible, and I and I yep. and I hope and pray for peace always. And I, I just prepare for, you know, the, the other things kind of thing. <laughs> like I'm not I'm not ever going to believe that everything's going to stay completely hunky dory and everything's going to be okay. I'm not going to you know believe that or put my put my own and my the people that are, are close to me. I put, I'm never going to be able to put my security the security of those people into the hands of people who have let down. Not just myself, but others before as well. So, I know that I'm speaking around the Marbury Bush again, and I like go around this whole thing. What I was saying was, is that I, I've noticed that a lot of people definitely want um, a time where we have more natural ways, where we kind of go back to certain things. And I think it's a beautiful way to look at things. I think that um, Mark, I'll definitely look into what you were speaking about as well. That that's we said it's the Navajo prophecy. What was the Red, look up the Red Star and the Blue Star? Prophecy, I think, of the red red kachina, a blue kachina prophecy by the Hopi. I think that's where it is. I did. A, I've done a lot of archaeology work and Native American study. And while I was out there, um, 
I sat and listened at the elder of the Navajo. And let me tell you, that's not an easy thing to do, being a, a fully white guy. I'm about as white as they come, okay? You know, I'm, I was born white, and I am white to the bone. But when you sit at the feet of a different culture, sometimes you are offensive and you don't even realize you are. If you sit at the foot of an elder of the Navajo and you say one word before you're spoken to, that individual will never talk to you. Yeah. So because I said, it's, so respect, it, it's, it's just the way the elders do things. It's just the, the way it is. And they don't, if you don't participate, it's not a big deal. They just, you're not worthy to talk to because you won't shut up and listen, you know? And so me with my listen first attitude, um, I, I didn't, you know, I did sit at the feet of this guy for about 45 minutes one day and he finally started talking to me and sharing with me you know some of the stories of the 70s where the native americans were ripped out of the the um, reservations and they were they were had their hair cut they weren't allowed to, this is in the 1970s long after the civil rights movement like it, you know in and, and civil rights abuses were still going on within the indian nations i just was blown away by that but <clears throat> I, I, if you don't sit, they don't tell you. And uh, I was hanging out with this this Navajo elder. He sweat me in a, a Navajo sweat, and he did the prayers and now It's a beautiful thing to experience. And he took me out into the desert. One of the best experiences I've ever had is being out in that high desert. There's nobody around. There's no airplane. There's nothing. It's just you in the silence of the desert. And that is the loudest thing you'll ever hear in your life. It's just there's nothing. Your ears are just searching and searching and searching to pick up anything. And it's just quiet. Navajo, very interesting people. If you get into that study, um, the Hopi, the Navajo, the Anasazi, uh, yeah, it's it's a great study, uh, the Hopi yeah. prophecies. Yeah, the, the Anasazis, they are the ones even the Cherokee talk about. And you're right, but when it comes to elders, that's what I do. I'm what you call the caretaker. So when the monks, the old, the real, real old ones, I don't say nothing. I just help them. And if I need something, I just wait. And they start telling me what I need. <laughs> that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's basically, folks, respect your elders. Speak when spoken to. Oh, yeah. You learn that really fast in Japan or you get hit in the head with a stick. <laughs> I have a knobby head because I ask oh, too many way. questions and get whacked in the head a lot. <laughs> Uncle Al, I'm gonna give you something. Just look at my thumb drive and you see what I look like on uh, my birthday and on Christmas when I had a uh, what they call a ceremonial or a funeral. This is what I ended up honoring my uh, Laos and grandmother. Yeah. That's, that's precious, and I think that um, those cultures are always something to uphold as well. I think cultures can, you know, help people learn a lot of things too. Um, so that's why I, I definitely have a lot of respect for that. I, I just want to say, firstly, speaking about that, um, hello to Uncle Al, formerly. Like, it's really awesome to have you here, and thank you for always supporting me. Um, I really appreciate that. And then um, it's always good to see you. You're looking really good, by the way. I just got to say, um, Uncle Al, like you, you I think... It, that shirt looks really good on you, but I definitely think you're looking very professional at the moment. I love that. He looks like he's 45 now. <laughs> <laughs> and I it's eight white dye and uh, whatchamacallit, Arabella water. I soak in my hair, make hair grow. <laughs> oh, that, that's what makes it grow then. I'm about to redo that. They saved me I'm gonna take the advice from that. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to need some advice from you, Uncle <laughs> Yeah, like I said, folks. It's going to be a fun year. You thought last year was a dumpster fire. This one is like Hiroshima. So be prepared for everything, folks. Uh, I think, Mark, that's Arkansas Woodcutter is right. A lot of things that the Hopi and the Navajo and the, uh, I forgot, uh, Apache, all the Southwestern tribe have in common is the ancient ones, the, the uh, first people, uh, that came here, boy, they had it hard. They had it real hard. And I keep telling people, we have it easy. I keep telling them, we have paper matches. Do you know how hard it is? To tr this is before they found out, wait, 
we could make it flame and hit other rocks with it to make fire. They had to do it the old way. You ever try to make a drill bow out of uh, yucca? That's hard. It took me two hours to make a spark. You know, you take a dry uh, yucca stock and you have a yucca base and you're trying to grind fine powder. Do you know how long it takes to do that? Uncle Al, I, I, was, I was thinking about that the other day. I was building a fire, and I had, and I was going to show off to my wife and build an old school fire. And, and I pulled out all the stuff to do it with, and I had a big lighter there. And I said, I've got the stuff I could do it with. We're just going to light it the old-fashioned way. So I poured a little lamp oil on it and lit it with the big. But <laughs> I thought about ancient man carrying that spark. In those, you know, they used to carry a spark with them to bring back to life. That was a yeah. vital like an ember. Yeah, yeah, that's called ember technology. Because before, before they had that, they had people sparking rocks all the time, and they're looking at them. You have to carry the ember, and that was a big thing. That's why I started this whole candle craze. You know, light a candle with charcoal. <laughs> And it's really hard because I set up all the fire alarms <laughs> in the house. That was fun having a Visalia fire department come by and they look at you. Why is your house so smoky? And it's like you're trying to explain. You're trying to film it and everybody's laughing. Um, I have to t uh, ask uh, Citizen Guardian or GP up here, uh, Guardian Prepper, you know how many pieces of hardtack you have to eat to get the color? color Le caloric, caloric content, value. yeah, to, to maintain life. We just I say get full in the south. How many you got to eat to get full? <laughs> <laughs> I think hey, KK's hey, going to be upset. You have to eat hmm. roughly t eight to ten pieces. Not just that though. Um, it's kind of it depends if you if you have your system the way that it is now. But if you were in a longer term emergency situation and your body would slowly adjust to a more of a manageable it's intake, like when you, when you although go to pizza diet, your body goes into that. I heard yeah. that, KK. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> it's it's definitely something where um, you know it, it depends on what else you have to kind of put with it as well, because it's you know you, you can put a small a bit of, of the amount compared to not having any bread substance at all. So it definitely is something that you would integrate into a already like a minimalized diet. But I do understand completely that there's two sides to it. So yes, your body would adjust to a, to, you know, to receiving less nutrition over time to a degree, although it's going to be important to kind of cram as much nutrition as you can. But at the same time, um, you, you, so your body will adjust to a degree, but at the same time, if you don't have um, if you're doing a lot of um, physical exertion at, at the same time too, fishing and hunting takes a lot of energy and so does shelter building. If you're doing those type of activities specifically, then you will essentially need a lot more of the nutrition. So there's, it's a, you know, it's, there's two sides to it. What I'm saying essentially is that the hard tack would absolutely be like just a, a side nutrition to assist getting through harder days as well. Um, but you're right. It would take a lot if that's what you had. Yeah. 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 Quite a lot. I, I keep yeah. telling people, I I know how people think, and <clears throat> I read old historic records from the south, from the north, and they would eat. They couldn't get fresh food or compressed food. That was another yeah. big thing that I read in the records. It's dehydrated food that was steam invented in South Africa. <laughs> So uh, a lot of people did not enjoy that because it's dried vegetables mashed up into a cube. Like, don't worry, you've got all your daily requirements of vegetable in this little compressed cube. You just well, you know, I am going to jump off of here. I need to go do some stuff. We've got a full panel, so we should be able to keep okay. the discussion going. Uncle Al, good to see you. you GT, too, thanks for, uh, for having me on here for a little bit. It was fun to be with y'all. Thank you so um, much for, for helping me out. Thank Absolutely. you very much, Rob. Absolutely. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. You want to see you and the rest of y'all. Nice to meet y'all. I uh, look forward to seeing you again. Yes. Yeah, and I'll try and do a more consistent stream so that if you if you do have a bit more time during the week as well, um, I'll try and do a more scheduled one because then it allows people to kind of be like, okay, uh, you know, that might come up at this time and that. So thank you very much, Rob. I really yes. appreciate it. All right. Cheers, y'all. All right. Have a lovely day. Enjoy the weekend. As well. Now let's ask. Uh, 
Hello to the yeah, panel. I just want to stand up for before. <laughs> you're, you're, you're center square now. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Guardian. Uh, Let's try to get out of the house. Denise. Let's get out and answer that question hey. that you answered us asked. What's going to happen in the future? <laughs> Okay. I'm I am in the chat as um, Crafter's Grimoire. Nice. Oh, I love nice. the name of man. I saw that. I really love that name. Okay. You wanna know what happens to the future? Just yeah. be glad we're in the United States, guys. Because the rest of the world I, I mathematically figured it out. You're gonna have five tactical nuclear wars. It we are not involved in them. Sometimes we are, sometimes we're not. It's every, it's like who has a nuke? And remember, Russia for in the nineties lost how many nuclear weapons? Quite a bit. Yeah. Another, there's a couple missing. There's, there's no, like there's like in a cellar somewhere. Some idiot has one in a cellar somewhere, and there's a, in the country. It's just some idiot. Right, right, Denise. It's concerning. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, it could be somebody next door. Yeah, I have four nuclear suitcases in my backyard buried next to the Ford. That kind of gets me nervous. I'm just telling YouTube that Uncle Al's joking. So if anybody from YouTube is watching, Uncle Al's completely joking about well, that. I'm joking, CCG, <laughs> and all the big businesses that are spying on us because I'm on your crappy list. Because I already have like 8,000 watch hours, and I'm still not monetized. You need 982 oh. hours to go. I'm a troll magnet. Be careful. I'm a troll magnet. I have a whole groupy fan club of nasty trolls. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, that's, if that's like the case, I definitely <laughs> don't pay um, much attention type of thing to those. Because if there are people that are particularly trolls, most of the time those people do so specifically because they want attention. And like, mm -hmm. I, 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 you know, even though they're just trying to make a bit of laugh, it, it definitely is something that's not always that funny because sometimes it can affect people, you know. So there is a light side yeah. to it where I'm just like ignore them. But it's simultaneously, sometimes a person who's having already quite a bad day and then you get somebody that will come on and just completely try and stir things. And it's just, I don't know. Oh, well, I have the kind that go offline and call your landlord. And they played the video of them calling my landlord to tell him he needs to shut off my internet because they found out that I have an included internet. And they said, well, they called this guy up and they said to him, now my landlord lives on the property. So he knows me. He ran to the phone to his grandfather who doesn't speak English and all you heard was the troll telling this guy how they were going to face a lawsuit if they didn't shut off my internet and the grandfather says, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, thank you. And <laughs> that is crazy that people wait to that level. That, though, but they do take it to that serious level. And I decided to keep speaking because I'm 70 years old. I live in Texas. I got a landlord who knows what's going on because we live close to the border. We know about gangs. He, he laughs at it. My police chief is actually following one of the trolls in her Twitter page. And I just said, I can speak because they can't make me. First of all, I'm in Texas. We have a homestead law. You cannot touch the roof over somebody's head. And you cannot take the social security check, even though you can mess with everything else. So I'm 70 years old. I don't own anything. Everything is in my one rent payment. And I don't, I, I, I'm doing survival skills of self-sufficiency, make your own everything. So they can't take anything from me. My, my daughter, my only child was killed in, by gang violence in 2010. And they started coming after me when I started speaking up about it. And I just said, look, bring it, bring it. I got nothing to lose. And then I began to realize they're also attacking young guys. They're attacking the men with their jobs. They're attacking families. They're, they're, they're calling women up and telling them that their husbands are cheating on them and wrecking their families. And I said, well, 
they can't take anything from me so I can speak and I address them and I name them and I speak and they, they cancel one show after another and I come back in a new channel and they freak out they say there she is again and I say 